Hey, it's Don. As you can see, we're going to be talking about skateboarding today. We're going to be looking at skateboards and skateboard decks and what sells the most out of them, the high dollar ones for the most part. You really want to look them all up if you don't know which ones are the right ones. Once you've looked them up enough, you'll actually know and you won't have to keep looking them up all the time. We're going to intermix some scenes from some old skateboarding parks. Um, it's all public domain images, but it's really interesting content. Um, it's part of the reason why it's one of the items that I do like. When we were in Florida, and even when I was a child, there was parks you could go to and you could watch them do the, the stunts. In the 90s in Florida, when me and my wife were just first dating, there was places you could go and just sit there and watch in big, huge areas and arenas, and you could just watch them doing these tricks. I've seen Tony Hawk perform some of these as well in person at one of these events in Florida. So, I mean, I really enjoyed watching this. I was never a skateboarder, but the tricks and the stunts, even back then, were awesome. I mean, some of the things they did were, were really impressive in my book for what it was. So let's take a look at some actual skateboards here. It's the deck that everybody wants. The wheels and such forth you can replace. They were made by other companies. The deck is the most important part of any skateboard. I don't care if there's wheels on it or not. If it's a good deck, I'm going to spend some money on it to get it. I looked them all up. Certain names always, always, always rake in the best money. Peralti is a known one. There's a lot from Santa Cruz and Santa Monica, the California coast. That is a big area where most of these show up, the high dollar ones. One of the main ones that goes for a ton of money is Powell and Peralta. I'm not really sure on the history of any of these at all. I, I can't go into specifics on them. This is a used board. It's been beat a little bit. It has some issues, as you can see. This is typical. The bottom is usually the best condition of the board. That's where most of the artwork went because the actual deck of the board would have been worn by someone standing and walking and riding on it, actually, which you can see here. So this is just a perfect example. Looks like it has some damage, as you can see. It went for almost $5,000 as a buy it now option on this. So the deck is what's important. I don't care if there's wheels on them or not. A lot of people I've watched pass by them a good deck for, you know, almost nothing at Savers and places like that because it was missing wheels and things along that line. I don't care. It's the deck you want. The wheels can be swapped out. If somebody's getting to use it, chances are they're going to put some newer wheels on it no matter what anyway. Wouldn't be safe to ride. Next one here is an 88 old school um, Stab Genie. Now the names and all are going to be on them, so the best thing I can tell you is to look them all up. Look up whenever you find one. Usually there is a name and you will find something similar to it. I don't think I've ever seen one that was like a one-of-a-kind skateboard. This is a Sims skateboard designed by someone specific. It's nice artwork, nice graphics. 1988, old school, my era, 970 bucks for this one. Next one here is another Powell and Peralti, Steve Steadham. It's just the designer. I don't worry so much about, you know, what the wheels are and such forth, because you can still find the wheels, sometimes still new old stock on these as well, too. It's nicely dated. Any of this stuff from California is great. Around where I'm at, we don't find these high dollar ones, but you can find ones that are worth a few hundred dollars. Uh, California, again, is like the key area to find most of these. Here's another one, um, Natus, uh 1988 Grail deck. Again, just the deck, just the deck. Uh, this is just a generalized area. You're going to have to go in and dig whenever you find something skateboard-related and look at them. This one's $2,500. Here's another one. Here's a birdhouse skateboard. Now, again, decks. Decks are what you want. This is a Heath Kurtchart. Again, there's tons of different names of designers from this era. Just look them up. Birdhouse is a known brand. It's not some scarcity that you'll never, ever run into. But most people, again, pass up on the actual decks. Unless you know that it's the deck that's important, you may not think of anything of it. Again, I see people walk by these things. Even at auctions, I can still get them fairly cheap. Here's just another one, Powell and Peralta. Again, there's a ton of them. This is 1980. This is a real early one. Uh, 70s ones, the dates with 70s are really hard to come by. This is $3,000. Next one here is another vintage one, Psycho Stick. Uh, let's see here. 
Thunderbolts. Uh, again, there's tons of different markings on a lot of these, so it may take you a little bit of time to figure out which one's the brand name on it, believe it or not. This is a good one, though, either way. And again, I don't care what the wheels look like or anything like that. This one looks like it might be odd, but people actually sometimes would switch and put different styled wheels in, in different areas, like they did in shoelaces back in the day. So I don't worry, again, about that kind of stuff. People used to write and spray paint them, and they do all kinds of stuff to the top of them. Airwalks, the whole works. I had a pair of Airwalks, Santa Cruz, the whole works. It's a very nice one, actually. $2,200. Here's another Sims, uh, Kevin Stab. Sims is the actual brand. Many different designs, again, on these. They're scarce. They're very, very scarce, most of these brands at all. $2,500. So you're going to have to look these up. Every time I find a skateboard that has potential, I look them up. There's some names that obviously I don't mess with because I already know not to look at them. But when I see some of these vintage ones, either I know the name and I'm going to snag it or I'm going to research it. But as you can see, this one went for $3,500. Next one is another Sims. It's actually sealed, still in the plastic, never been touched. Rather interesting here. $1,749 plus shipping on it. Early old school one here. Here's another Powell and Peralta, early 80s. This is a uh, Lance Mountain, all tied back to California surfing, skateboarding, the whole works. It has a nice, it looks like 85 date on it. Nice one, $1,700. Next one here is another sealed one. It's mint. It's still in a bag, actually, with the warning sticker, the whole works. Still has the label. This is a Santa Cruz brand. Nice one, $1,540. Now, I don't know everything about skateboarders. I know enough to look for them. That's all you really need to know. Look for them. If you just find the wheels and the chucks or the axle, any of the stuff that goes with it, I will buy as well, too. Here's a Jason Lee one here, Blind Jason Lee, 1990. Again, this goes in the alternative scene and the whole works. Well collected again. It's the bottom of the deck with all the artwork. This one's complete. It has the, the plastic runners and the whole works on it. Again, you don't have to know everything about any of this. All you have to know is to look for them and look them up. When you see a vintage skateboard with some graphics on it, look it up. Again, the name on it is very specific. You can pretty much narrow it down. You don't need any other special tools other than eBay to track these down and price them. Next one here is an Evol skateboard, uh, Bad Religion, Brian Barber. It's all a big tie-in to the alternative movement as well. $1,500 here. Here's another Sims old school, Kevin Stab. The pirate ones, for some reason, were big time in in the 80s. This is almost $1,500. Next one here is an SMA brand from Jeff Hartzell. Just another typical example of what you would find back in the day. And again, just the deck. The top obviously was used, even worn. Whatever the case may be, they're still great items. $1,400. Next one here is a Schmidt Stick skateboard. Another early example, the street thing. You just got to know what to look for on these. Once you see the size and the shape of some of the vintage ones, you're never going to miss them. Again, look them all up. Look them up just like you would anything else. The money is here on these. And again, most people pass them up if they don't have wheels. I just don't understand that, that they just don't get it's the deck that you want. Next one here is some worn decks, but again, they're from the 70s. Jim Murr, Dogtown style, Rad, the whole works. These are typically what you would see back in the day. $1,300 basically for these two. Again, decks. There's people that have hundreds of these mounted to their wall. Just the decks. That's all they collect. 
Next one is another Powell and Peralta. It's an original 70s. Now this one has wear, so I don't know why he'd even put NOS in there. Used or not, it has too much wear to be new old stock for, in my book. Still sold for $1,200. Had it not had the wear and the issues to it, I'm sure it would have went for $2,000 or better. Just got a couple more here. Here's another old Dogtown 70s era. Typical. It's got the wear. They've got the extra guards and the whole works on it. Just what I look for. Any of this style here. Even with the damage. Some of the earlier ones had grit attached to the face of it. So they did wear and, and tear. Sometimes it was a sheet that was actually laminated on the top of it as well too. So any of these. Again, I don't care. Wheels or not. $1,136. And the last one here is a Vision brand. This is from the 80s. Another perfect example, the shape, the style, the size, the whole works on these. Just what you would expect to see on this $1,900. So that just gives you an overall understanding. You've got to look these up. The name brand means everything on them. The name brand is there. Usually there'll be a copyright on every single skateboard I've ever seen. The deck has a copyright. Next to the copyright is the name you want to look up. Only worry about that name first and then center it in on one of the other names that's on the board. But look at the name by the copyright because that is the company that made the deck. Well, there you go. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.